Hey, it's Thomas DeLauer with BeFit, and by now you're probably rocking and rolling through 2016 pretty darn well. Today in this video, I want to talk about the difference between probiotics and prebiotics because it's something that's not touched on a lot, and I think there's a lot of confusion out there, and I wanted to do this video so everyone could get a little bit more clarity as to what a prebiotic does and what a probiotic does. And if you stay till the end of the video, I'll show you a few foods that you can eat that are going to give you a lot of those prebiotic fibers to increase your digestion and ultimately help you lose some fat. So let's dive into exactly what a probiotic is. So a probiotic is basically the healthy flora that you need within your stomach and your intestinal tract. We have billions of bacteria in our gut and good bacteria and some bad bacteria. And those aid in the proper digestion of certain foods. And in fact, the bacteria within your gut actually communicate with your brain sometimes in something that's called the enteric nervous system or the enteric brain. And the bacteria within your gut actually communicate with your brain. So you see your, uh, your gut has something that's called the enteric nervous system or the enteric brain, which means that that bacteria is creating electrical impulses that communicates with the brain. So sometimes if you've ever noticed when you get an upset stomach, sometimes you'll feel a little bit more stressed out or vice versa. You'll feel stressed out, you'll get a little bit nauseous, you'll get a little bit of an upset stomach. So the brain and the gut communicate, and that healthy balance of bacteria and healthy flora within your gut is so critical. So when you take a probiotic, you are giving yourself additional bacteria. You're giving yourself some strains of the bacteria that you might have missed out from taking, maybe some antibiotics that killed it off. Or maybe you ate some food that didn't agree with you and exhausted a lot of the bacteria within your body. So probiotics are a great thing, but the reason that I'm doing this video is that I think they're kind of overrated because I think you're gonna get a lot more benefit out of a prebiotic. And I'm gonna explain it like this. When you take a probiotic, it's like a drop in the bucket. You've got billions of bacteria in your gut and your digestive tract. When you take a probiotic, you know, you're basically putting a couple million back in there. You're putting a little bit of bacteria back in there. It's like just a small amount in the grand scheme of things. And here's the crazy thing, is that most of the time, the hydrochloric acid within your stomach kills off the bacteria before it ever has a chance to get into the gut. So you're really not assimilating and utilizing much of that to begin with. Now the other thing is that everybody is different. You see, if you've got one person, person A over here and person B over here, they're gonna each have different strains of bacteria within their gut, or they're gonna have different quantities of different bacteria. So person A over here may have loads of bacteria one and not that much bacteria two, whereas person B may have not that much bacteria one, but loads of bacteria two. So when you take a probiotic, you're not really able to hone in on exactly what bacteria you need. It's not specific for you. And although a lot of the probiotics out there are multi-strain, meaning they have different strains of bacteria to combat that issue, they really just don't do the trick. Now when you look at a prebiotic, prebiotic is like a fertilizer. A prebiotic stimulates your body to create more of the healthy bacteria that's already in it. So that same person A, that has a lot of bacteria one and not a lot of bacteria two, well that fertilizer is gonna help them produce more of the bacteria two that they need. And person B who is deficient in bacteria one, well the prebiotic is gonna help them create more of the bacteria that they need. So you can see how by giving your body bacteria fertilizer, it's a lot better than just adding a drop in the bucket of a probiotic that's gonna end up getting killed off in the stomach anyway. So because you've been watching this video, I wanna give you a few ways that you can increase the amount of prebiotic fiber that you eat. And there's a few foods that really make a big impact. You could go out to the store and you could buy a prebiotic and they work great. But at the end of the day, it comes down to eating the right foods. And if you can implement these foods just into your everyday diet, throw them into your salad, throw them into soups, or just flat out eat them raw, you're gonna notice a big difference. And you might get a little bit gassy when you first started out, but that's totally normal because you've got an influx of good bacteria. Your body is digesting. So there might be a little bit of fermentation that happens within your stomach, within your body, but don't panic. It usually subsides within just a couple of days. So let's look at the foods that you can eat. The first one is gonna be chicory root. You get a lot of times you get chicory root in soups. You get it in spices that you didn't even know was existent in. But if you can find raw chicory root, it is one of the best prebiotic fibers that you can find. The next one is gonna be raw asparagus. And I know we're so used to eating asparagus grilled, or we're so used to eating it baked or steamed. Try eating it raw, it's really not all that bad. You don't have to eat that bottom stalk, that bottom portion that gets really, really fibrous. It's not gonna be a little bit of a pain to eat, but if you at least eat down to about the last two inches, you're gonna get loads of prebiotic fiber. Another thing that you can do is you can soak them in apple cider vinegar for a little bit, and then you're getting the additional benefits of apple cider vinegar on your digestive system as well. Then we've got artichokes. 
So you're kind of catching the drift here that anything that's got those fibrous qualities to it, you know, artichokes kind of have those fibers that run alongside it. Like when you bite it, a lot of times you get the kind of stringiness that hangs out on the artichoke. Those are the prebiotic fibers that we want. And then things like raw dandelion greens, which you don't see a lot, but they're usually over by the sprouted section. So like if you look and you see broccoli sprouts or you see other kind of vegetable sprouts like radish sprouts, a lot of times you'll see dandelion greens over there as well. They have a little bit of a bitter taste, but throw them on some salad. It's a great way to get some prebiotic fiber. Now, one that's gonna be a little bit hard for you to get down, it's gonna be raw garlic. It has to be raw. As soon as you roast it or you cook it, you're killing off a lot of the prebiotic qualities of it. So you gotta eat it raw, so it's perfect to eat around Halloween time when you're trying to fight off the vampires. Lastly, if you've ever bit into a raw onion, you know how powerful and pungent that is. Well, it's just as powerful and pungent within your digestive system. Raw onions are one of the best prebiotic foods that you can eat. I know they're hard on the breath, and combined with the garlic, it's probably a nightmare for your family, but just give it a couple of days, and you're gonna restore that digestive harmony within your gut. You're gonna feel a lot better, you know, absorb a lot more nutrients, lower those cortisol levels, and get in the best possible shape of your life, starting right in your gut. See you in the next video.